Yo, what's up, Brian McGee? It's episode 163 of the Super Mega Cast. Also, yes, uh, it's not ever called the Super Mega Podcast. I've been calling it that more just because I feel stupid saying super the Super Mega Cast. Well, we shot ourselves in the foot with that one, buddy. I'm thinking we should change the artwork on Spotify and iTunes. I want to do that soon. To a real picture of us, though. Okay. I feel like... I feel like it vibes. It vibes better. Okay. We should. And sh- I wish we could just change the name to the Super Mega Podcast. Sorry, we're having an existential crisis uh, yeah. about our own branding. Five seconds into the podcast, because we want to be taken seriously as Let's Players for some reason. <laughs> dude, how how are we ever going to be taken serious in the Let's Play community <laughs> with a name like Super Mega? I know, dude. But Everyone uh, has such serious names in this community. I'm hopped up on cheese and Red's Apple Ale, so that's disgusting. No, it's a I, gross combo. I don't like Red's Apple Ale that much. As you can see, I haven't really finished it. I'm tried. I'm going at it. If you vomited right now, it'd be the most foul-smelling vomit. Blueberries. Blueberries. It'd be blueberry, blueberries. apple ale, and, and alcohol and cheese. Yeah. Like the Jack Daniels and Cheddar Cheat, Story. Yep. That, that would have been worse, though. It's a classic. Classic story. Anyway, we're back. It's been a, it's been a busy week. Uh, we have honestly, just the past two or three weeks, just been fucking hitting the... Hitting the the whetstone with our swords, you know, constantly losing footage and having to re-record oh it. Oh my god, it's been great. We recorded two episodes where we almost got to the end of SpongeBob Battle for Bikini Bottom, and the computer froze and mm-hmm. crashed, deleted the files. So we did it's it. It's actually we, three episodes, but we oh, played it was. so much better in the second round that it and crunched it down two, to yeah. two episodes. But so. we uh. I mean, it'll make for better episodes at least because we knew what we were doing. Yeah, um, can't have y'all complaining all the time. I don't know if it's out yet, but we we did finish SpongeBob. No, that's not coming out for a bit. What is it? Because this podcast isn't coming out next week until like, yeah, yeah. We're kind of having a backlog right now. Podcasts because uh, I'm I'm going Austin to bye bye. <laughs> you're going Austin Austin Powers more like to a wedding. Yeah, uh, Ryan's getting married. Very excited for you. Thank you. I wish I was invited to the wedding, but I'm not. You know, pick your battles, right? That that one's not worth getting into. No, I usually don't talk about my personal life that much, but it will be good to finally be a part of that whole married culture. Yeah. So we'll see how that turns out for me. I'm happy you're settling down, man. I mean, it's it's nice to kind of escape the wild ride of the, the Let's Player lifestyle. Yeah. You know, crack and, cocaine. And just because I know some kids can't pick a joke out of a haystack, uh, the haystack that is our podcast, uh... I am not getting married. A friend of mine is, and I'm going to their wedding. So, that friend's name is Brian McGee. Is Brian Griffin? <laughs> Wasn't he married? He there was a Family Guy episode. Where he was getting married. He to fucks someone. women all the time. He does. So well, he's a dog. So the women f- fuck him. No, I guess yeah, male. Do- yeah, he he fucks them. Yes, she, but she let they let him fuck them though. And we should do a whole video essay on like the the whole why it's okay for Brian Griffin to. Like to, bestiality in the Family Guy world, and like what that means for consent slap in the Family into some Guy hot world. Slash. <laughs> you never fail to make me laugh in your <laughs> euphemisms for vagina. Thanks, man. Some some hot some hot slash. We were <laughs> driving. Steamy slash. We were driving, and Jackson was like, "Dude, I'm just trying to suck gash," and it just like <laughs> made me laugh so hard. So many good, like so many better terms for that than than dick. I and, think dick's just boring. You know, cock. penis, cock. Ew, come on. Penis. I, demonetized boys. Gash, Can we not slit? say penis? No. Oh. Absolutely can't say penis. We should just title from now. We should change the name to Penis Mega as a big F you to the industry that's trying to <laughs> we'll censor us and trying to demonetize. It's a big fuck. It's, Get it's purposely it's, demonetized to show that we're with you, It's YouTubers. a protest. It's a protest. Say, look at this, guys. Penis Mega. What kind of protest is that? It's, it's purposely getting demonetized. What are we protesting against? What what is what what can be the outcome of that protest that works in our benefit? People are like, damn, they're sticking it to the man. We're all penis pie, penis plier, <laughs> penis septicai. We're all <laughs> taking a stand. Hello, it's penis plier. It's cock a plier. I can you do cock a plier. Hello, everybody. It's cock a plier. Mark Fishcock. You could change it to that. Imagine Mark a plier is a giant, like, like, uh, kind of six foot tall, f- four foot wide penis. Has headphones on, you know. You know, he goes. Very, Hello, very, everybody. Very, but, like, but, it's, veiny. but it's like it's it's the opening to the penis talking, dude. And I'm... when he looks, and then when he screams, the foreskin rolls back in fright. God, that's <laughs> Why was he? I didn't know he, he has was... a little tuft of I, hair. I didn't know colored. that he was an uncircumcised penis. 
Mm. Wow. Okay. Well, I'm sure he'll listen to this and uh, get some good ideas for for future content. You know, he can he can finally fulfill. Well, his he needs these ideas. He does, and he can he can become a penis. For his a channel's day. dying. You see those? You see that sub count and those views? His channel is doing horribly. <sighs> we're 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 almost caught up to the old man. We're gonna pass him pretty soon, actually. <laughs> God, some of those YouTubers. I mean, I look like PewDiePie is like a hundred something million now. Markiplier is what twenty six, twenty seven million something. Sean's like twenty five million. Game Grumps even five million. It's like psst, psst, psst. drop in the bucket here. Okay. We're we're still sitting here less than a million. What uh you know Max Max Mofo told us he said we don't mean shit we're nobodies until we hit a million we don't matter as people until we hit a that million is subscribers. True. I mean one day I would like to pass Game Grumps just so uh I I can stick it to our ex boss's face Brent yeah yeah I I want to say Brent fuck you this is this is this is what happens see this is what happens when we end on good terms and. And you allow us to do what we wanted to do, and we go head first into something that we don't understand, but we build upon the business in which we started and are given more time and um we're very grateful for everything that you've done bitch they're just they're just saying <clears throat> now a lot of people yep, gun to my head a lot of brent Brent's in the room right now, sterile and balding with a gun to Ryan's head. he's edged to the max, so if we say one wrong word, he comes on he, he comes on contact and he did that when we would edit, which is why we made so many mistakes but yeah. uh they so many people th- uh i think like lo- look into it's YouTube like drama. That. remember when you were a little fucking little baby child kid and you would be like. Shane Dawson said this about yeah. what uh, yeah. are they not friends anymore? And so people like always are like, Ooh, Super Mega and Game Grumps are on bad terms now. Like they like Matt and Ryan must hate. It's like no, we're all good. We stop li- with the TMZ bullshit. It's li- we're literally just groups of adults that you know we edited for a good period of time, almost three years, and said you know what, uh, we've we've grown this thing now. Let's let's focus full time on this and see where it goes. And they yeah. were super. They helped us make that uh, that move. In fact, like that was actually the plan from the beginning. Yeah. I remember we started, and Brent was like, "Give us a couple years, and then." Uh, well, Brent sail said, your own this, "Like this, I, I want to make sure this isn't." I remember at the very start of us working there, he said, "I don't want this to be a full time gig. Y'all have like talents and other stuff that you want to do, and I hope that yeah, we do. We, we essentially us working for Game Grumps was their way of trying to build us up to the point where we could eventually leave." Right, it was because like at, the time, we, we, at the time we we had just started Super Mega when we joined Game Grumps, and we what we had like twenty thousand subscribers or if something. That, yeah, like we were real small. So, uh, I mean, I mean, we didn't have a source of income at the time because we weren't employed. So, Super Mega was making like fifteen dollars a day in ad revenue, if that, if we were lucky. Remember that? Remember when it hit over ten dollars? We were like, oh my yes! god! Oh yes! Oh, we made like double it. digits, and now it's making about three point six million a day. Yeah. Um, it's a little bit of an improvement. <laughs> It kind of pisses me off. It's not. It's not over five a day. But yeah, we're working on it. We're working on it. Because we, we up each want two point five mil. I hate having to do this whole fucking fuck taxes one point eight split with you. You know, I'm not paying taxes. Fuck no, taxes. No, not this year. They, what are they, what are they gonna do? Fucking arrest me? <laughs> then guess what? Uh, guess what, bitch? Um, is that you talking to the IRS right now? No, is no, no, bitch, the IRS. I, no, bitch is not the IRS. <laughs> I'm going to be paying my taxes this year in full. Maybe a little extra. I might just pay some extra taxes. Just, just pay off the IRS. Just give them an extra like thousand. Just say, don't look into things. And then on the check under subject, it's just a winky face. <laughs> My taxes this year, they'll just be <laughs> just a nice round number with a winky face. <laughs> like, all right, that's that's, that's good. Or, or, or I'll just I'll be like, DM me for a shout out. I'll give you one shout out and on then, Twitter. And then where you write in words the amount that you give them, it says treat yourself to something nice dollars, and then the zero. Over the hundred for cents. Hey, kid, for buy yourself cents. something nice. Well, I'm going to flick it to an IRS agent like the guy with the coin in the movie. He's like, hey, kid, catch. I'm going to flick the... Like in the old sports commercial yeah. where he throws him a, 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 a Coke or a Pepsi. <sighs> throws the kid. Probably he's Coke. The with the towel. Coke, Coke has good commercials. Pepsi's never really hit the nail on the head with the commercials. Is Pepsi the one that's like, change the world? And it was Kylie Jenner. We're all epic. Remember that one with the cops? And, and it's like a protest epic. and she gives Colored the cop... people are epic. Uh, man, they didn't. They did. They did like a that like really weird commercial with Kylie Jenner with the police. Remember? Yeah. Remember back when like Trump protests were big, and it was like or protesting was beginning to be like a give big a old... cop a Pepsi. Okay. I was in a uh, Santa Barbara recently, and I passed a Starbucks and saw on the door they had an advertisement for coffee with a cop. 
where it was like, cops will be here on Saturday. Come talk to them and have coffee. Talk about important issues. I'm like, you know, they don't even want to be there. I don't want to be there. Or maybe like, they do. They're like, I'd rather have a coffee than have to deal with the PTSD my job entails. What, they're going to go to a Starbucks and get screamed at by some teenagers in Santa Barbara. <laughs> I'm, I'm more think of showing up to the scene of a car accident and seeing someone's face split in two, but yeah. Yeah, actually, the teenager screaming does sound nicer. <laughs> Being a cop has to actually suck. Some of the shit you see. Yeah. I mean, it's a dangerous job. Or EMT. Job. Yeah. Oh, EMT. I think that's probably... And you, you probably... Do you go into it with that numbness for that stuff? Because, you know, some people Maybe just Maybe not, that. but you have or to. Or do you think it grows, like, you develop it? It's one of those things I wonder where... if you can put on a filter where you just, you know, like, don't see it as that. It's as seen as work. So you, you see, like, a mutilated person, and you don't get the shock of it. It's more of just, like, this is my job right now, and I need to do You know this. when people are um trying to get into a nice, co- like, doctor, like, they get a doctorate degree? A lot of people back out of that because it becomes too hard. I feel like, in certain forms actually because you have to do the work to figure that out i feel like doing the job is how you figure that out yeah like a lot of people go into because i want to help people and you know they see the whole thing of like i'm gonna take this old man who fell out of his chair he's like yeah but i'm also gonna take these three toddlers and scrape them off of the side of the road and put them <laughs> in the back of a of an ambulance yeah it's definitely like i think people will go into it same with like Remember growing up, all those kids were like, I'm going to be a vet. It's like, you want to cut open a dog's stomach and pull a ton of worms out? You want to, every day of your life, inject a dog with a fluid that would kill it and watch its family members cry and ultimately turn into a blubbering mess? That's how I get high. I was once one of, a Same. part of those blubbering messes. Putting an animal down sucks. Yeah. I, I've had Eventually, to do that. Eventually, I'll have to put Lego down. Yeah, I mean, I, I have put, but it's annoying because I put banana down like six times. And this, they stuff, they, they don't make it strong enough. Um, he just keeps coming back. Yeah, no, I remember I I've had to put down I had to put down my family golden retriever. Me personally, my dad gave me the rifle and sent me in the backyard. Yeah. That sucked. Yeah, shit sprays. Um, I was only given cleats. Ooh, I'm sorry, man. That yeah. sucks. Yeah. Uh, but but I remember I had a golden retriever my whole life. He was 12 or 13, and he died on Friday the 13th in 2012. Mm. I remember that specifically because he had lymphoma. And he had given us a lot of like scares because he had gotten sick a couple times from the cancer. But was we he going like deaf and blind and all that. Too? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You could. T- I mean, he was old. Like bigger dogs don't live as long as little dogs. Yeah. And, and he was my dad. We exercised him every day, to take him out for walks, and he was he was thirteen, so he's pretty mm-hmm. old for a golden retriever. Um, but he just started kind of going downhill, and then it got to this point after like uh, the cancer really kind of hit, and it was like, ooh, we, we shouldn't, you know, we should probably take him in. That's sad as fuck. It was very sad. Mhm. So, we got to put grandma down. When's that going to be a thing? <laughs> well, there are already uh there are laws now where people can uh go through with assisted suicide. Assisted suicide, yeah. So, I guess the next step would be like, ah, grandma's being a bitch. That's scary. Take when, her in. When it be when, I I don't think it will reach that point when when it falls on someone I don't else. No, you, you and your socialist crew, you know, Bernie Sanders isn't as is in as bright-eyed and bushy-tailed as he can come across, you know. We kill all old people. <laughs> Euthanize them. I will be the first after I am president. I will be the first old person to be put down. He gets he gets sworn in, just gets put down immediately. <laughs> How do you feel about assisted suicide? How do I feel about assisted suicide? Do you think it's a uh... It's a cool thing, not a cool thing. Do you, uh, do I don't you think, think it's cool. No. Do you think it? Do you do you <laughs> um, think it should be allowed? Uh, in certain circumstances, yes, I think so too. But if like, not to the extent where you're like a thirty year old and you're like, I'm depressed. I mean, I'm talking yeah. like if you are like, there has to be something 90. medically fucked with you, like, or even you can be thirty and you have a terminal illness and you're just in bed and you're a vegetable and you're n- nothing but pain. Not mental pain, physical pain. Like, yeah, exactly. Like, <clears throat> like I, I, I'm for it in that case. Yeah. I understand if if that if that's what the person wants. There's this a uh, popular video where it was like this family and this this it's like it's kind of like a mini documentary about assisted suicide that was on YouTube. It might still be on YouTube. Very interesting. At the end, they they kill the person. I remember when the first one happened though, because I remember <clears throat> uh, hearing about it in the news. <clears throat> it was like the first or. or the first one like recently in the terms of the last like decade so i remember mm-hmm. i saw a thing about it uh during like my current events class at school and i was like oh it was like the first uh, i think i don't think it was in america though i was in like yeah a european country of course 
without a you know without a doubt i feel like it has to be proven that your your quality of life is deteriorating fast or your quality yeah, of life a, is like just not really there that's not a choice you can like undo yeah you know where you know if i get a nose job i can get some more surgery on that but if i'm like take me out i can't undo that or they could just well, you suck. saw michael jackson was probably one of the most rich people in the world he could not get them to fix that I shit i do i think with plastic surgery no matter how much money you have if you if you fuck it up enough it's 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 done Nose like, jobs are very like the Circus Brothers. <laughs> what are they called? The Circus Brothers. What are they called? The Bogdanov Twins. <laughs> yeah, them. What do you think? Why are you just say the Circus Brothers? Are, don't they perform with tigers and shit? What do they do? They're tech billionaires. <laughs> Wait, what? They're French I, tech. I billionaires. thought they were like Vegas tycoons of some sort. No, they're French tech billionaires who <laughs> had a TV show Wait, about they technology. Wait, they work for technology. They had a TV show about technology. <laughs> they're not like they're not like they don't work with tigers. No, they're in tech Las guys. Vegas? They're super rich and famous. All my life, I looked at those faces and I just assumed they they would look perfect. What you thought they were the tiger Wrangling brothers? <laughs> no, no, not not that far. But I legitimately thought that they were just some like. Vegas performers that worked with tigers and shit because they they give they give off that vibe whenever I look at their photos. Come to gross Vegas where you can watch these gross men. <laughs> they do backflips, throw them some that peanuts. Feels mean. That's just straight bull. Well, they chose to look like. Well, that. I I do feel like at that point because you know, you know how there is uh, you know like body dysmorphia and stuff. I think that plastic surgery becomes uh, an addiction for some, yeah. and also if you become because obviously when they look at themselves, they don't see what we see right <laughs> if they did exactly like i i think that there's a, some mental illness underlying there with that when you have that level of plastic surgery yeah because i it, there is a plastic surgery addiction like people become addicted to that and i feel like that happened to both of them and they just became or they had a genius plan they were really attractive before all were that they? they were you want to see what they looked like yeah they were like when they were young so they ruined themselves the thing is if they had just aged naturally they would still be super handsome this is uh but they decided to but Stop you wouldn't the... know their names otherwise. I know? don't know their names. I still don't. And you told me the Bogdanov twins. Bogdanov. Look at how look at how handsome these guys were. Look at this. Let me see. Those are some good looking men. <clears throat> Why did they do that to their face? Why did they both do that to their face? I wonder if and, and the hair too. They're crazy guys. How old are they? Not crazy, but I'm saying like they're they're crazy looking guys. How old are they? They're probably in their sixties now, fifties or sixties. What's well, the thing about plastic surgery? Sometimes you can't tell. You know? Jesus Christ. I have to get my septum undeviated. Are you going to look different? I don't know if it will actually make anything look different because basically they're shifting a part of the inside of my nose. Mm -hmm. So I'm wondering if that's going to make my nose look different at all. Because my sister, I was talking to my sister and she was like, it can make your nose look different. So I'm wondering if that's going to, my sister was like, while you're at it, you should just get a little nose job because people throw that in while they're doing that stuff. And I was like, eh, nah. no thanks. I like my nose. What would you do? If I got a nose job? Yeah, if you had to do one I thing. I don't know. I can't. I've, I've thought about that. I'll look in the mirror. Because I used to be very self-conscious about my nose because it's big. Yeah. And I have like long nostrils. Well, I'm, I'm not saying that's big. I was just going along with your no, story. No, I've, I've, I've grown to be comfortable with my nose. I like my nose. It's, it's unique. Uh, <clears throat> I don't know if I, I don't think there's anything I could do to change it. Just make it bigger. Mm. Just make it three times bigger. I could go to some doctor and tell him to get all the. Well, where does that go? I don't know. The skin farm? Where does that stuff go? Like biohazards. Is they there... throw it down the garbage disposal. Imagine working at a biohazard plant. Like a biohazard waste facility. I would absolutely hate that. That's like working at a power plant. It's just so dangerous. There's so much shit there. Imagine working in a morgue. I would hate to work around Super dead Mega bodies. Morgues Incorporated. Yeah, no, it's not fun being around dead bodies. I don't... The people that own morgue... Dude, funerals make so much money. Like, the death industry... Buy the casket. What else do you want? Casket's like ten grand. It's like, like what kind of funeral you? do you want? They'll guilt you because it's like, you know, your husband was such a great guy, and I'm sure this casket would be fine, but you really want to honor him, right? <laughs> I know. Look at this this ivory casket taken from live elephants. It's twenty five thousand dollars. You should then one up them and go, okay, I'll take the the expensive one, but then can I want it carved into the shape of a penis? I'd be like, what? What? If you were, you, you could. You could Somewhere, someone could do that for yes. you. For the money? Oh, yeah. A big penile casket. I could make it a part of my will. And then my family would have no choice but to do that. My family of orphans that I, what that if, I adopt. But they're not legally binded to. No. But they would feel like they'd let you down. Yeah, they'd feel like, oh. Or they could just, the new this new generation, be like, ah, he's dead. Ah, fuck him. Yeah, and we, we got all of grandpa let's play, grandpa's Let's Play money. 
all your let's play money in a in a, in a trust fund for your grandchildren. <laughs> nickels, <laughs> nickels and a dime. <laughs> Two nickels and a dime. <laughs> There's all of Grandpa's Let's Play money back from the, the teens and 20s. You know, back in the day, this could buy you nothing. And it still can't. <laughs> uh, we know we blew that Patreon money real fast. We fucked that one up. We, we got an office to where this room never gets cool. How did we choose I don't think the, the AC's on right now. Is it not? I don't think so. Why, why do you say that? I don't hear it. Are you getting up? Getting up. I want to get a drink. Okay. We take a quick break. Then when we come back, we'll talk about funerals. Yeah. Hey, we're back. We took a little break. Yeah. See if the air was blown. It is. I grabbed myself a beverage. We just need to get a little tiny AC unit for this room. Just get a small Filipino boy to go. Just put it up on there and just have it go. Ooh, that's not a bad idea. Um, But we're talking about funerals and how much money that industry is. And it's one of those things where it's like people have to kind of pay for it. So it's kind of fucked that how much they charge. You don't have to pay for a funeral. You don't have to have a funeral. You don't have to have a gravestone. You don't. Well, you still have to get buried or cremated. Cremation is yeah, because the thing... and then they're gonna be like, "Do you want this pot or this one? Do you want them in? Do you want pokeball shaped pot? supreme pot, dude? Gucci pot? If I die, put me in a supreme pot, okay? I'll put you in a fucking bottle of water with a supreme sticker on it. That's kind of on brand. I'm not, I'm not going to say that. <laughs> and then that. I'll chuck you into the ocean. And then when people are like, you're littering, I'm like, no, it's a vessel for my friend. It's my friend. <laughs> also, the thing, but you buy a coffin, you spend all this money on it. Um, I want to be frank. You spend 10, 20 grand on a coffin. To rent it. To honor the person I to, get. No, you bury him in it. <gasps> Dump the body out. Keep the coffin. Use it as like guest bed. The, Money saved. Yes. In the guest room, it's just an open <laughs> casket. And just climb inside. I want to know. No, I don't want to say that. I like like still hair from the cadaver in there. What is this stain? Oh, that's formaldehyde. Don't worry about <laughs> that. I mean, I mean, the whole death process, the embalming process really is really fascinating if you choose to be buried because basically you're just a big... Uh, it's a waste of land. Don't be buried. Burn yourself into ash. I know. And also, like, it's more expensive to be buried. And on top of that, it it it's a take it takes up land and you could say there's so much land but the the thing is also uh, a lot of places it's really bad for the environment because they fill you up with like formaldehyde yeah. and all these chemicals and then that just ends up eventually seeping back into the earth well, like back in the day burying someone was like very nice very sentimental but now there's so many people it's like well, it doesn't matter because like in a small town and you have your you have your cemetery there's gonna be like you know over over the next like let's say two generations like about not even 500 grave plots. That's that's a hefty sized plot. Yeah. You know, I had a, you know, at my church, there were a lot of people with the same to last name since it's families who continue to go to the church generation after generation. So they have like, the area. Yeah. So they have places already picked out and shit. Yeah. I, I, I wonder if people are mostly cremated now because like you, you look like for, we live in Los Angeles. So what? That's 9 million people. Mm -hmm. I think people die every day, but there's not like graveyards everywhere. Yeah. So I wonder like, what in in a where way? Is I, it, where does it all go? I think cremation, in an odd sense, has more finality to it. And it, it, it's almost like you know symbolic I mean? too. It's like literally in the Bible when it says they're "dust gone. to dust, ashes to ashes." They're gone. They're, they're they're not there. There's no monument to to their memory, which is fine. You can make your own if you want. You can have them. But then that pot. leaves it up to you. You don't have to pay for an expensive plot of land. You can make your own monument. Whether you want to put some kind of monument, like erect one, actually, yeah, like maybe at a special place to them or whatever. Um, but like, cre it's kind of cool because, you know, you literally started out as like dust, like cosmic matter, like billions of years ago. Stardust. So we then made you become out of stars. Again. You become dust again. You made out of dead stars, bro. We are. You know, we're being, we're being pelted by very small, tiny neurons flying through us right now. Shit. Isn't that f weird to think about? Oxygen's killing us slowly. Is that true? I don't know. Oh, it was that old meme where it's Keanu Reeves where he's like, like that is, and it's like, what if oxygen is actually poisonous and just takes 80 years to kill us? Doesn't oxygen age shit, though? Like, just being out? Damn, I need to get myself, like, a chamber with no oxygen. What if I... Because when you freeze someone, it, it you don't you don't turn as gross. I don't know. If, you, if someone's well, if in a room... Well, if you're freezing somebody... When you're freezing someone, like, the bacteria does not is not active, I guess, right? Mm -hmm. Because it needs like to operate at a warm temperature. 
So if the bacteria is frozen, it's not going to break things down. Here's an overall lesson on how we're not going to get away with a murder. Because we don't even know. We don't know how shit. dead bodies work. We have no they idea. They don't move. They're either underground or burned in a little pot. <laughs> like a little, like, kitchen pot. Yeah. And there was a, there was a Medea play, a uh, Tyler Perry play, where there's a character whose who's mom's ashes are in a Pringles can. Yep. Isn't oh, you've fun? seen it? Yeah. I, I've, I used to watch the plays of my mom on DVD. I told you, you know, church groups love their Medea. They do. Like middle aged white women love their Medea. Yeah. It's it's that's one of the biggest demographics, I would say. Not the biggest, but one of the biggest. I'd say, yeah, yeah. People people like my at least forty five percent of my the people sweet who mother. watch Medea episodes are from Baptist, Methodist, Lutheran churches, I would say. I found out uh some I've been finding out a lot of stuff on my grandparents lately, uh, on both sides. And um, I found out like some very interesting stuff about uh my grandparents on one side about like their religion. I didn't realize there there are some there's some very specific sect of Christianity. They can't watch movies. Something like they don't they don't go out. They don't like take part in the world. I think they're very closed off. Um, so like they don't know anything about politics. They don't know anything. That's about... back from like oh, our religion starting to sound like bullshit. Don't go out and expose yourself <laughs> into the world. It's just it's interesting because they. You know, my mom. That's what it comes across. It's, it's it's my dad's parents, but my mom was like, yeah, you know, they they haven't ever gone out and seen a movie. They haven't, you know, because I, I always wondered. I was like, why don't they have a e uh, computer? Why don't they have email? Why don't they have really like self? Who's calling me? Someone's calling me right now. Are you gonna pick up? Yeah, I'm gonna pick up real quick. Okay. I might I might do a quick zip. Okay. Sorry, I that was a phone call from my doctor. Not looking good. Anyway, um, yeah, my my no. Let, let's make sure people. Your health is fine. He just. He just wants to make sure you know that you do not look good. My doctor was saying like He took that, a look at your Instagram today, looked at your haircut, story and was that like that haircut, Matt. What are you doing? Buddy, come on. Come on with the haircut. <laughs> You're not fooling anyone with that 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 hairline. Come on. Anyway, yeah, I think my grandparents are um some very specific sect of Christianity. Uh but the thing is, what's really fascinating is my grandparents are not bigoted or like racist or anything i've never actually no one like my mom or like never heard them ever once say anything about politics or anything about any other race and because they were they've always been really poor and i think that uh they've always been like they they would help out people that are in this kind of the same social status as them um so they they never i've never heard them ever say anything bigoted or anything which is really interesting i think they just detached from the world which I didn't know this until like literally today. They're like Amish without and having well, so much really. makes sense now. No, they were like they watch TV, but they'll just watch like reruns of the Andy Griffith show and Jeopardy. Um, occasionally Jeopardy, and they'll watch uh, like Billy Graham, like the, like televangelist, like you know those you flip it through channels you and you see Peter those. Pop off. Uh, I I can't do see that if you can my, get them hooked on. I can't do that to my my poor grandmother and grandfather. As a fuck you to your dad for no reason. Make make them give all of their money. To to Peter Popoff instead of to him. I don't think my grandparents have any money. <laughs> yeah, because they, they gave it all to Jesus. They gave it all to Peter Popoff. Jesus was all was never about money. Follow me and you will lose everything. No, but gain everything. If you know what I mean. <laughs> my grandparents are very sweet. Um, because they've never really like, they're not they're they're, and I and I'm speaking like I feel bad saying this, but like they're very poor. They're very, I feel like they just live a very happy life though just with each other and they don't really do much but um, make fun of other people yeah they don't they just gossip all day man. <laughs> all day dude well I, if my grandparents were to see the type of shit i make do you do, do, do your grandparents know about super mega i only have two of them left same i my my on my both mom's grandmothers side, both of my oh. both of my grandfathers are dead yeah, my grandpa died on my mom's side before I got to meet him. He was a Marine, fought at Iwo Jima. Mm -hmm. uh, I learned some interesting things about him recently because I didn't, never knew anything about him. I learned that uh, he was there on the mountain when they did the flag raising picture. Ooh. He wasn't in the picture, but he was, he was there. He was there. He saw and he, it. he knew a lot of those guys, apparently, that are in the picture. Nice. Uh, yeah. And that, that's, he had PTSD for the rest of his life after mm. war. War will do that to you. My mom said every time there'd be like, fireworks would go off in the neighborhood. he'd like dive under the desk and like be shaking and stuff sounds funny sounds like it should be in an Adam Sandler comedy <laughs> <laughs> he unfortunately passed away before I was born so I never got to meet him but I have his nose I look at pictures and I'm like that's that's where I got that that's where I got that big old honker 
And my grandma died when I was a wee little boy. You know, if your mother ever wants to Frankenstein him back to life, she's going to have to take that sucker have to off take your this face. She, she like knocks on my door in California like, I need the nose, son. Knocks you out. You wake up without your nose. And then I can get a brand new nose that I'm not self-conscious about. But you, do your grandparents know about Super Mega? Uh, one, I think they know kind of like of what I do. One, my Oma definitely knows more than the other grandma. The other, my other grandma is not looking too good health wise in general. So I'm not sure how, uh, oh, you should then show her Super, Super Mega, Mega might then. be perfect, honestly, then. Yeah, honestly, you should show it about it. I think, uh, I just realized I could probably show my grandparents because they're not connected. I could show them like, like a, re like a really good movie. Like, I thought uh, about a really good episode of Super Mega Plays Animal Crossing. They would go crazy for it. No, you could, like, imagine, I could probably show my grandparents a Wes Anderson movie and be like, yeah, I made this. Ooh. And they, did, they, just, they would believe it. You could, you could cut it up to where the credits do say Matt Watson. Like, in the very beginning, just directed by Matt Watson. And in their head, because of the life that they've lived beforehand. Without they don't the know, exposure yeah, to they, everything. They wouldn't think that you would have gone and edited the movie at all. No, I don't think. You can put course. yourself in a movie, like. It's like Brad Pitt talks to someone off camera, and you're like, okay, Brad. Thanks, Brad. And then it's like- that, That's me. That's me. See? It's like, whoa. I, I should do this. I should gaslight my sweet old grandparents. It, well, make them believe that you did something with your life before they die. Because right now, it's not looking too hot for both of us. <laughs> yeah, what, so what, did, what do our obituaries say? It's going to say Let's Play. Not much. <laughs> Is it going to say Let's Play? Ryan, Ryan Elias McGee. You used to be known for what? making- <laughs> Do will our obituary comedy, say that? Crazy. Will it be like in in his prime was known for for making YouTube videos? I just have to make sure I outlive my mother so she can't write my obituary. <laughs> <laughs> oh my, Ryan! If you die young, I promise I will not let your mom write your obituary. <laughs> Thank you. I will write it for you. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. I will write it with uh, grace, and I, I will make it very sweet and professional. My sweet little Rai Rai. It'd be like my. My sweet baby Rai Rai, mommy's little boy. Used to work for Markiplier. <laughs> <laughs> and Game Grumps. <laughs> she puts a fucking, like, she puts a URL in the obituary. In the obituary, which is like, but, but she does the thing she, where she copies it from the Google homepage. <laughs> yeah. So it's like the go long Google URL plus the search result <laughs> URL. So it's like three paragraphs of just like <laughs> hyperlink text that's just on printed on newsprint. Oh, man. I feel like, uh, I don't know. That, that, that just made me sad now because I was like, how do I continue the conversation? Like, well, if I write my mom's, uh, more than likely I'm going to be the one that writes all, f I guess, three of my parents' obituaries. What are the odds you let me write your mom's obituary when she passes? Fifteen. Three, two, one, Fourteen. Ah, oh, fuck. Damn, dude. I was excited for I would have had to uphold it. You would. <laughs> like, your dad is like in tears working on the obituary and you're like, dad, what are you doing? Why would my dad write the obituary for my mom? Oh, that's a good point. All right. Jim has <laughs> been writing. divorced for like 20 years. Okay, so <laughs> 20 her husband like is writing. Four years. J Jim is writing the obituary. And you're like, Jim, what are you doing? That's Matt's job. <laughs> Who? <laughs> that homo you did the YouTube videos with? Oh, Cecile was a wonderful white that I spent <laughs> most of. <laughs> uh, she was uh, pretty good for a woman. Even though she was part Palestinian, I was able to look past that part of her complexion and see the beautiful white in which she became. Oh, she was, you know, she gave me some lip, <laughs> as every female does. But uh, you know, uh, she was a she was a good wife. She She's was a, a good piece of property. I like that. She's a good. <laughs> She's a good. <laughs> I, I I love those like southern abbreviations like some bitch, some bitch. If I wrote my mom, they just like. She's like most famous for her work, and then I put like a porn title, and then uh, then I do a serious uh, thing. So people are always like, "Was she in that?" Wait, porn? no one fact checks obituaries, right? <laughs> of course, it's, not. Wait, it's what you want it to be. So you, <laughs> I could be like, "My mom was best friends with Abraham Lincoln." You could write the crazy <laughs> obituary, and no one in the newspaper is gonna be like, "Hey, your obituary doesn't sound right to me." It's like because you're like, "What? You're gonna question my dead mother?" It's like exactly. So you you could do. We need to have excellent obituaries. Like, we say that we were the number one subscribed YouTube channel. Some people can, uh, when they're doing their will, I think they have, like, a someone write up an obituary for them or something. So it's like when they die, they can... I know that I should make a will sometime in my 20s. 
Yeah, because it's the smart thing to do. Um, but it just it feels so depressing to do because it's like now let's deal with my debt. I have a question. If I was like, I give everything to to. Let's say okay, I'm like I in my will. I want everything that I own and all of my money. I want it to go to Adam Sandler. Does that mean legally now my lawyer, when I die, has to go to Adam Sandler? If not, if he's still not alive, then his estate and go to his children and be like, yeah, this. No, because I feel like a lot of people would dedicate shit to celebrities and celebrities would get it. I feel like you can't do that. I feel like the party has to be knowledgeable. But then you have those no, movies yeah, where the they're people not. It's like, oh, my great aunt died. I had no idea. And I got all the money. Yeah. I don't know. I I feel like your lawyer would highly advise against that and be like, I would not suggest doing that. Why not? Because it's I'll be dead. It'll be funny. He's he's like the highest paid man in Hollywood. Why why give him Maybe I'll make give the news, maybe I'll be on BuzzFeed. That's true. This man donated all of his <laughs> life savings to Adam Sandler. Who then danced on his money at a bonfire. I, I wonder the extent my family would go through in honoring my will. What if in my will... Would if I you, put, like, weird shit in there? If like, I was, like, I want to be consumed by by Adam Sandler. No. Would you sneak into a restaurant with a salt shaker, switch the the salt or pepper shaker out with my ashes, and have him pepper up his pastas with now let, some let's of see, my Ryan, ashes? Now, let's see, Ryan, that's a big heist right there. Because that has, that means I have to be the waiter for Adam Sandler's table at a restaurant. So I'd probably <laughs> have to... You know, and, and I, I guarantee the go on one of those Hollywood tours. Find out what restaurant he he goes to a lot. Start working there. Eventually, you will find him. And if you always like like how Jesse always had that rice and cigarette and that pack of cigarettes for whenever he would need to use it in Breaking Bad, you can have that salt shaker with my ashes in. No, it. No, I can have a cigarette with your ashes in it. I think that's a lot more on brand. You want a cigarette, Mister Mister Sandler? Thank you, son. Ooh. <laughs> This is hitting stronger than usual. I like the flavor. And of I this realized one. I gave him the rice and cigarette. By <laughs> I, I would, I would like to get you. I would like to smoke your ashes from a from a bowl or a bong, in true Ryan McGee fashion. Yeah, I'd like to pack your your ashes into a bong. And you have you have to make me, you have to turn me into goopy shisha. My flesh oh. and my insides turned into shisha. That's disgusting, dude. <laughs> in, grind, in honor of they when grind we, me up. In honor of when we used to fire up the hoop. I'll make sure to eat a lot of cheese before that. Oh, if man. I know I'm going to die. That's going to be there. I'm going to have tears in my eyes. I'm like, like, this is so Ryan. I'll start like, I'll just funnel cheese into my body. Now, let's let's not act like that's going to be right before you die. That's just going <laughs> to be. I'm doing that day Yeah, to you're day. just already doing that. I love cheese, man. You like cheese, man? Yeah. He's my favorite superhero. This, this, I just realized, we, this whole podcast, we've just talked about death. Isn't it sad? It's very sad. It's it's you ever you ever just think about death and you're like, oh, we're gonna die eventually. I know. And there will. I always think about this. Sometimes I lay in bed and I'm looking up at the ceiling. And I go, there will be a point where I close my eyes. Like it is coming. That that day is coming where I die. Every second closer. Could and that's be, freaky to think. It about. Honestly, could be when I'm heading home today. If this is the last podcast we ever release because we died, people will be like, they predicted their death. Put this in your in your clip video. See, they predicted it. They predicted their death. They were even in one clip talking about predicting their own death. Yeah. yeah, so we predicted our own death in that one podcast episode, and we died shortly after. I just want to die of old age. I do, too. I want to die bored and alone. But at the end of the day, it doesn't matter, because when you're dead, you're dead. It doesn't matter how you died. You won't remember it. Yeah, but I'd dead. like to live a little more. I would like to continue. I like living. I like, I like to at least get to my, uh like, mid 40s or just 40s in general I'll take another mid 40s I'd like to make it to my mid 40s I love that movie mid 40s Is that what the movie's called? Yeah, about the uh No, 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 you're thinking of the Paul Rudd movie with um Leslie Mann uh that was directed by No, I'm talking about mid 90s. Oh, but it, because it takes there's a movie the called 40s. This is 40. This is 40. Yeah, that's right. With uh, Judd Apatow directing. Judd App. yep. I, I didn't see it, funny but I, me- I remember seeing the, the posters for people it. People are saying Funny People was good. I saw it in theaters when funny I was younger. People. I didn't like it. What, which which one's that? It's about the stand-up comedians has and Adam Sandler. I think he has, gets cancer or something. It's like Seth Rogen and Jonah Hill. and I don't I don't. It might have Leslie one. Mann in it, too. What about? Because, you know, that's his wife. What about the new Adam Sandler movie, Uncut Gems? Have you seen the trailer for it? I can't it? wait for that I have movie. not seen the trailer. I'm excited. But I'm I heard excited it for good. That and Lighthouse. We're going to go see Lighthouse when it's out. I'm excited for that. People are always like, are you afraid of death? 
like no sh- everyone is but i i think you can get into a at the end of the day everyone's afraid of death but i think you can get into the set of mind where it's like it happens to everybody it's inevitable we're in our prime dude that's why we got to be working out and be like fit. through the 20 like oh, i'm already halfway through my 20s and i'm already lived half but here's how about that Half of my twenties. Catch me outside. I'm I'm a I'm a sh- I'm a schlob, you know. I, I eat what I want. I don't work out that much. But then in the latter half, to build up to thirty, the thirties for twenty five to thirty, I'm healthy. That means through the thirties, the forties, I'm healthy. And when the forties kick in, I'm not gonna be feeling the my those joint pains. Here's the thing, man. What I've heard from from older adults, which I imagine is very true and not just like an old wives' tale, is that. The way we're treating our bodies now, how much we drink, how much you smoke, how much you junk food you eat, exercise, like you, you're fucking yourself over for later in life because you will be unhealthy. And it's like if right now, if we set up healthy lifestyles to just, you know, like we'll be good, we'll live. Talking about getting healthy for a while, people are fucking sick. I hate hate feeling my stomach. Why don't we fucking make a nice future for ourselves and get get healthy together? Because then the rest of your twenties, rest of our twenties, we can be because food tastes good and I like eating. We can still eat food. You just gotta. Change up but the I ways in which you all do all the food. <laughs> eat all the food. <laughs> nom nom nom. Yeah. Uh, I I don't want I don't want to because if we if we keep going the way we 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 are now at thirty we're gonna be forced to have to change because our body is gonna be like what are you doing you yeah. fucking I mean as I even if, as I've gotten older I'm only twenty three I I can already feel that like I can't just go eat a bunch of candy anymore because like then I'll just feel like absolute garbage like if like I remember back in. College or high school, I could go to Seven Eleven. I could get twenty dollars of candy, lay in mm-hmm. bed, down a soda, and and just eat the whole bag of candy yeah. and chips, and then like go to sleep and wake up fine. But like if I do that now, when I'm you gonna wake feel up like feeling like fucking shit for for like two days because like your body is a machine. And, you know what you put in it, you get out. And back then, I guess your body's working fine enough because it's young. But as as things get older and set in, it's like. Bro, you gotta be putting the right kind of. I know. Fuel I started to get tubby in middle school when they started serving those those pizzas. Those were not the like the the pizzas that cost extra. Oh, smart like mouth. Are you, talking, cl- are you talking smart mouth pizzas? Yeah, along with those. I think no, we lived right next to a Julius Caesar, so I think they provided the pizza to our middle school. I mean, Little when, Caesars. Little you Caesars, lived next yeah. to Julius Caesar. <laughs> I know, Little Caesar. Ryan, and come over. I'll, I'll make you some pizza. And then they introduced. The thing that I think fucked me over health wise. Otis Spunkmeyer cookies. Those, and the big one for me was Clux Deluxe. Once they released those fucking the sandwiches, the shittiest fucking sandwich I've ever had. But yeah, but I, I dip couldn't it stay in away honey from mustard. It. I couldn't I'd stay like, away from it. Mm. Clux Deluxe. It's like then you get an Otis Spunkmeyer cookie, put it in one of those vanilla ice cream cups. Then yes. so good. It's just pure garbage for your body. Oh yeah, but it's good. It's I mean, what I, made the man I am today. So it made the Let's Player sitting here on the couch. But uh, that's enough talk about death and sad stuff. And Here's some ad reads. Here, let's do some ad reads. Cheer you up. Brian, be gone because you're actually out of town at the time of recording this specific two ad reads. So it's just me again. Do you guys like saving money? Wait, don't answer that because I know the answer is yes. That's why you should be using Honey. Have you ever bought something online and find out you could have gotten it for less? It's honestly worse than being broken up with on your birthday. And not to mention, once that happens, you feel like you could be overpaying every time you shop. You get paranoid. Luckily, I have Honey, a free browser extension that saves you time and money when shopping online. Honey scans the internet for coupon codes and other discounts. Then, like magic, it automatically applies the one with the biggest savings to your card at checkout. It knows about every coupon code, sale, or discount at over 20,000 sites like Amazon, Macy's, J.Crew, Domino's, Sephora, Target, and more. Just shop like normal, and Honey will do all the work for you. And believe me, it feels amazing. Like not getting broken up with on your birthday. Fun fact, last week, uh, I bought myself a pair of... I bought my, I bought the Magic Shoes from Forrest Gump, the Nike Cortez Classics. I bought... Uh, magic shows and uh i was able to save 20 percent on those uh so that was actually like really freaking cool and then jackson ordered a pair too added on my order got 20 percent off those as well so i actually was able to save like a legitimately decent amount of money on honey so honey has found its 10 million users over a billion dollars in savings Yo! so listen there's really no reason not to use honey it's free to use and installs on your computer in just two clicks get honey for free at joinhoney.com slash megacast that's joinhoney.com slash megacast so lately i've been trying to spice up my room and make it make it the most me i can make it because I, I think like 
your your room and your home is is the most important thing to make you. Um, and you know, it's 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 the ultimate form of self care. You spend one third of your life in sheets. Don't you want them to be insanely comfortable? When you sleep, you should sleep well on hotel quality sheets that don't cost an arm and a leg. People are loving. Slash recommending Brooklinen.com. Brooklinen sheets were named the winner of the best of online betting category by Good Housekeeping. Raving reviews from Business Insider, Apartment Therapy, Men's Health, and more. 35,000 5-plus star reviews, more than any other online betting company, and half a million happy sleepers and counting. I got some Brooklyn in sheets. I got a duvet cover, too. Mm -mm -mm. When, I, when, I, when I climb in my sack at night, my bed is what that means, I, I, it, it feels like a bunch of clouds are cradling me and taking me to an, an, another realm where I, I get kissed by Christ himself. And why is that? Because their mission is to make you comfortable. You can mix and match over 20 colors and patterns, too. Luxury sheets, towels, bedding, and more without the luxury markup. Did you know that most bedding is marked up as much as 300%? So I'm here to proudly say that my Brooklyn and sheets are the most comfortable sheets I've slept on. And their towels have turned my bathroom into a spa. I couldn't recommend them more for friends, family, or treating yourself to the upgrade you deserve. Brooklinen.com is giving an exclusive offer just for our listeners. Get 10% off and free shipping when you use the promo code SUPERMEGA at Brooklinen.com. It's so confident in their product and all their sheets, comforters, and towels that they come with a lifetime warranty. So the only way to get 10% off and free shipping is to use promo code SUPERMEGA at Brooklinen.com. That's B-R-O-O-K-L-I-N-E-N.com, promo code SUPERMEGA. These are the best sheets ever. All right, those were some <clears throat> Banking good ad reads. Yeah. I, I should point out because, you know, this is dropping this, this this week is, I'm pretty sure the week before our last tour of 2019, right? Oh, shit, it is. Yeah, we're doing a Texas tour. So if you live in Texas. And you haven't uh, bought your tickets yet. They might all be, because there's always a big surge uh, of sales towards the end where it's like last minute people. Because I do that with concerts where I'm like, shit, shit, I'm shit, like, shit. fuck, fuck, fuck. So if that's you, you better go run over to supermegashow.net and grab your tickets because- We didn't even have an ad on the channel really, did we? Oh, we didn't, know. Austin's already sold out. Uh, Dallas is is getting close and Houston's getting close. So, oh, shit, uh, really? Yeah, if you guys, guys want to go uh, see us live for whatever reason, it's a wild, wacky show. Um, it's a chance to see us see this type of humor on stage where we just have banter and their little bits and uh, little bits, little videos, little a Q and A segment at the end. Do some live drunk drawing. Talk, yeah, to talk to people. It's weird it's because fun. it's fun. It's really fun because I, I I still feel like just fucking Ryan McGee on stage. I do too. I feel so like Ryan it's weird McGee on seeing all these people. I, I think about it. I step back and I think about. It. it Doesn't make sense to me. It honestly doesn't. When I see all those people. Like in the crowd, like I remember Orlando, there was a shit ton of people. Anytime where there's a crowd of people that are like, look at who this is. I'm like, that's me. I'm not me. I don't know why. I feel I, I just don't understand way, it. I, I can't I can't fathom because I, I what see... people see in, in, in me is in terms of an entertainer. Because if I was like a world renowned comedian or if I was a uh, like a musical artist, you know, people in the audience, it makes sense. But like when I see people in the audience for our shows, I'm like. What? I know. It's just so. I mean, it means the like, world. Because like, I don't us. see myself on. I don't. I I don't see myself on that pedestal. Yeah, I don't either. Even though like there are certain things that like come with having like a YouTube personality in terms of like the the degradation of your uh, social life, for instance. Yeah, absolutely. You, you have to like if you if you want to. I don't know. So here's the thing with a lot of YouTubers: they they either will turn their social life into cash. Or they will kind of be very not secretive, but very kind of close to the chest about what their their personal. See, secretive life. always sounds like a negative word. Yeah, you know, it's not I guess secretive. They keep their it's, personal life close just, to the chest. It's, it's, it's not private. something to share to everyone because you don't have to. Yeah, you know what I, what you what you put out and the face you put out for uh, the people that enjoy your content. That's that. But people aren't. Uh, people don't have a right, and like, yeah. they're not. Um, you don't owe them your your private life, of course. I just feel like, uh, and there are pe pe people that want to cross that line, yeah, and try to get into it, which is it. fine, depending on like what type, what cult of personality you're you're getting into. Because like, but... if you if you have a following, there will always be the people that will try to cross that line because they want to know more. They want to, you know, they they crave wanting more knowledge about your personal life that is not on the surface. Mm. And um, you know, it's like I would not do that because it, it's. 
it's just kind of a overstepping. I just know. like knowing that this is my time and I don't have to put it into the business. Yeah, it, it, like, it, it can I mean? feel exhausting. Yeah. Yeah. I just, uh, I don't know. Just, I, I just see a lot of YouTubers, as I said, you know, back when, uh, David Dumbrick and, hey, and Lisa Lampanelli. Stop. <laughs> I'm kidding. Uh, I'm pretty sure they're wonderful fucking human beings that have never done a, a bad thing in their life. No, actually, David Dobrik has never sinned. You know that? Yeah. I, I don't think any of those YouTubers have. Not a single sin. Or anybody on Twitter calling anybody else out for sh- something wrong that they've done in the past. Never. Not one single sin. Um, that always gets me. Let's cancel cancel culture. <laughs> <laughs> but uh yeah just uh i don't know i oh oh there ryan's phone. ryan's phone fell off the couch oh, where'd it go you that scared the fuck out of you dude you're like ah! <laughs> oh, got there it there we go yeah what were you saying i can't remember all oh. i know is uh i just don't see the i don't know just, I, I feel like a lot of people sometimes share too much and they don't they don't take notice of the personal conversations and interactions they can have with people. I feel like without first having it go through the the monetization uh portion of their brain. Someone like Logan Paul, you know, I think that's like that that does that. Of course he has a private life too, but he puts way more out there than someone like you or me do. Yeah. You or me does do does. I don't know. I feel like it's just bad for your mental health. It's kind of that's the same what I thing found about for me. Being on social media like I know, I, I, I don't tweet or uh gram that much anymore and like ever since i kind of like stayed back of that like of the social media stuff i've just kind of like felt better because i'll just go home and instead of because there'll be moments when i used to be on the grind i used to be like what's what's something what's something like i used to have to be like what's something funny what can i tweet i used to try to force a tweet out if i felt like i didn't have a tweet in a few days i'd be like now ryan that's like what happens when you try to force a fart you might shit yourself you might shit yourself yeah you just gotta let it come naturally i um I'm I'm frankly, you know, I I have a social media addiction. Yeah, like most people, uh, I I, I have it, a phone addiction above everything. Yeah, else. it's very hard to like. I remember uh, there was a point when I uninstalled Twitter and Instagram and stuff on my phone. I was like, I'm only gonna use it on desktop. And the amount of times a day I found myself going and to try to check it and be like, wait, what am I doing? It's not. Where is it? Like, was crazy. Like, because you need that little extra. Like, it's like that. Ugh, dude, I've it's like started, a drug. Every time you check it, it's like ah, something new. I've started doing it, and I have to ch- relax Crack? and not do it. <laughs> yeah, where like I'll be playing a video game, but I'll also have um a podcast or something going on in the background. If a cutscene's not playing, I'm like, no, 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 enjoy the environment of this game. Enjoy the game. Like I don't know why I have to like no, have don't, content. Don't, don't stop. Don't say that because then people will stop <laughs> listening to our podcast. Oh while yeah, they play games. It makes the experience a lot better. Yeah. <laughs> It does. It I, I personally do like listening to stuff while I play games. Like, no, I like a it podcast too. while I, while I play some Minecraft. Well, fuck yeah! Like the games that I found more like I was I was trying to play like the Gears of War five story base is hard campaign, and I was like, why am I doing this? But in all honesty, like with games where all you're doing is kind of like grinding, like Minecraft or RuneScape, that's nice to that's, have. That's something. fun to have a podcast on. But yeah. like for me, I was I was more talking about when it would get in the way of the narrative. Oh yeah, where, like yeah. I would. It's it's kind of like. And I noticed this when I'm watching a movie at home. There's a difference. Sometimes I've done this. I'll shut my phone off and just throw it across the room. I'm like, I don't want to touch it. I just want to be in this movie. Interesting. And I and I and I get into the movie and I watch it all the way through. You forget about your phone. Yeah, and I forget. But there's that anxiety when you remember. You're like, oh, I need to check it. I need to check it. But then when I'm watching a movie and I do check my phone, it takes me out. Like every time I look at the screen, it takes me out of the movie, and I have to go back in and get like get back into. Yeah, I feel that. My, so my, it's better to kind of put the phone away sometimes. I do get jealous sometimes. when I see people talking on, talking online or uh, just talking in general about like taking a break from social media. It's like, yeah, I, I got rid of Facebook, Twitter, Instagram for a month. I could get rid of Facebook. I don't use it ever. I haven't posted in all. When's the last time I posted on Facebook? Let me see. I never use Facebook ever. I mean, I, I made my Facebook in middle school and I, it's just there. I could delete it. But like, again, I, there's some things where I feel like. Maybe in the future I'd want to be updated. Yeah, because, I mean, like, that's kind of my last way to keep in touch with some people in my life, <laughs> like, from school. It's almost been a year. The last thing I ever did on Facebook was change my profile picture. Was it to that nasty picture? Yeah. Oh, that. No, that's not a nasty picture. Well, it's you, you had the, that the my one that mother and mother probably did not like. The yeah. one with your cock out? 
There was a wreck in the foreground. Because I started doing the gross ones where like. Because like you had nice profile pictures, like very like. I'm gonna go back to like the first ones. Hold on, let's let's go back. Let's go back way back when. Oh man, my Facebook goes back a little too Look at far. This shit. Boom, that's emo-ish phase. Then I did that. I just because I ne I had didn't. We all had a we all we all had a, a caricature of ourselves at some and then point. There was a point. Where, See, that's all good. Where the like, bald head. My mom annoyed me to the point where I just wanted to have that. <laughs> <laughs> We've talked about it. It's and a then, nasty ass <laughs> picture. Then, like, They're like one. the most gross selfies. <laughs> And like you photoshopped your lips to be like crustier and like your eyes are crooked. Um, but yeah, I think what Aaron does, for example, is Aaron will uh Aaron will go I think he doesn't actually have Twitter on his phone, but he has an app that lets him tweet, but he can't see his timeline or everything, so he doesn't have to deal with uh um just that constant buzz of Twitter. And then also I think Leighton Leighton does a thing. Uh, she was doing it for a while, I don't know if she still does, where she turns her phone off for three hours every night. As like a practice and it's like yeah. during that three hours do something creative do something different but just you cannot turn your phone on don't worry about it I and miss, that sounds nice i miss uh the feeling of a woman uh, yeah i just fuck my hand <laughs> it ain't no woman uh, you know, if i if i into my hand you know a little bit like a woman <laughs> better than a woman better way better no female can my compare to my can hand be, can get tighter than any woman's little little uh little penis <laughs> That's what they have, right? Ryan, I gotta tell you something. What? Gee, what if like you legitimately got to twenty five without realizing like wait, what? A grown man just calls a clitoris a little penis. That's not a penis? What? Well, it kinda is. It's from the same tissue. And much how a um penis naturally will have foreskin, the clitoris has the clitoral hood. I hate I do not like that, uh Clitoral hood. I don't like that. Sounds like something in a Dead Space game. The clitoral hood. You get to the end of this. Get to the get to the base and make sure you detonate the clitoral hood before <laughs> all humanity is lost. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, like the the penis, the the anatomy of a penis is so basic, and then you look at like a diagram of a vagina. It's like labia majora, labia minora. <laughs> it's like all these like crazy things, dude. Fucking vaginas look like the grave mind from Halo Three. There's a Pokemon right, that looks too. like it. There's a Pokemon that like. I'm gonna has show that. you the Grave Mine. What's the Grave Mine? It's an enemy in Halo. You ever think about how much more complicated girls' like reproductive organs are than ours? We just got this little flappy slab of skin that's all nasty looking with a little sack hanging down, while they have this intricate fucking factory that can actually create a human being. See, there's the Grave Mine. That's his mouth opening. Yeah, yeah, yeah absolutely. But would you believe it from the side? He looks, uh, he looks a little bit like a penis. No, no way. Yep. Cool. Yeah. You tooted. Yeah, it might be milky, so we'll see. But yeah, it's been a, this, this is one of those episodes where it's not as many goose. We just talked about shit. Death. We talked about death and sad stuff a bit. We talked about, uh. I don't think any super mega cast has some sort of, like, the vibe. Because we always either go on off. We're we're going off on some tangents. Or we're just talking. I mean, that's what the podcast is, though. It's, we're just talking. Yeah. You know, it's not like the podcast out there that prepare topics and shit. And that's awesome. I wish we could do that. But Could you imagine having to record something every week and then some weeks your mental health isn't good and you just don't feel like talking, but then you have to? It's not this week. I'm just saying that's happened in the past. With oh, that, of course. I mean. Where I've been like, I don't feel like fucking talking for an hour about whatever oh absolutely i just want to go home and lay in bed <laughs> I, I equate that to like you know remember when we oh, worked when, when you worked at food lines like i don't want to go do this shit but yeah. it's work i have to it's but it, this is the work that honestly at the end of the day like i realize how so lucky i am doing. to be doing because i realize the 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 likelihood of uh like if i were to have to redo life and try to get to this point again i probably wouldn't be able to do it uh, like same. even if i had the knowledge it's like okay this is what i have to do probably wouldn't happen same exactly uh, cause we, I guess, a very specific path, and I think that, um, like with every job, Yield every every job effect. will, yeah, every single job will have things that are like, oh, cause every job is still a job. So even if it's like a dream job, like this, yeah, it's still gonna have those things sometimes where it's like, oh, you gotta treat it like a business sometimes. It can't all be goofs and gaffs. Yeah, when I'm when I'm doing tax forms, uh, Ryan will be slapping his penis around. To uh, make them laugh, because yeah. I know tax forms aren't fun. Then I fuck it up, and then the IRS is breathing down our throat. Which, by the way, you don't need to look into our taxes, guys, at all. 
IRS, please. I we told you. It's all you can good. trust us. We're sending you a check with a winky face. Remember? Remember? When that check comes. When that check comes. When the check comes. It's uh that's just a nice gesture, you know? Write yourself in a look at that. That's five five hundred bucks. Smackaroons, baby. That's a that's a nice steak dinner. You know, I might not even make it out to anyone <clears throat> specific at the IRS, so Maybe maybe a blank check even will be sent to you with a wink, winky fi- what? Not a blank check. Why not? We got all the money in the world. We're making almost five million a day. That's true. That's true. Yeah. <clears throat> we'll send every employee at the IRS a fruit basket. How about that, dude? That would send like if there's one thing that would just send off red flags at the IRS. <laughs> it's like every employee at the IRS gets like, oh, we got a a muffin basket from a super mega. We can do what a uh, we can do what the sign. The Church of Scientology did, and we can uh, sue people, have civil suits filed against. Well, the problem is we're only two people where they were like thousands. <laughs> so, man, I can feel my bowels working. You want to go squirt some hot shit out of your ass? Yeah, I think it's about that time. All right, guys, we'll be back next week at 164. Check it out on streaming services like Spotify and iTunes. In a couple uh, days on Fridays, it'll come out on YouTube. Absolutely. And also, please, uh, if you are interested in seeing us live in Texas, uh, October 16th, 18th, and 19th. Buy those smackaroons. No, 16th, 16th 17th, and 19th. Okay. Sorry, in Texas. Uh, go to our website, SueMegaShow.net. You can buy tickets if they're still available. They're selling out quick, so <laughs> please hurry. Oh. And, uh, yeah, thank you guys so much for watching. Uh, if you liked this, plenty more episodes where that came from. Love you. Bye. Mm-hmm.